Welcome to First Presbyterian Church, where faith is nurtured, curiosity encouraged, diversity welcomed, and all are loved. We worship so we can grow in faith and live this faith out in the world. Join us and be part of something special. As we listen for the word of God for us today, we hear first from Hebrews 13. It follows a section where the author of Hebrews encourages followers of Jesus to be faithful in enduring challenges and to live in such a way that people will see Christ in you. Reading from Hebrews 13, verses 1 through 3, let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, that some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them, those who are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. In our second reading, Jesus calls to him all who are weary and carrying heavy burdens. Reading from Matthew 11, verses 29 through 30, Jesus says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke, yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The word of the Lord still speaking. Thanks be to God. Depending upon our readings, these two texts give us just only one, one way to do it, one way to love, one way to share, one way to act, and one way to serve. In both our texts, Jesus Christ give us this, and we will never do it, our brothers and sisters in Christ, without humbling ourselves and looking into Jesus. In this messy world, Jesus himself obligates us to do it, entertain the strangers. Share your suffering with your brother around the world. Now, it takes us what God put down to extend it beyond our walls of our church. Other members of these congregations, other followers of Jesus Christ, we are obligated to extend our love, to extend our service and to extend our sharing to our brothers and sisters who are now suffering around the globe. Because of these sharings, in our church today, how the members of First Presbyterian Church, we are brothers, Raymond's, from Grand Highlands. Brother Raymond went to South Sudan. He went to Juba. He went to Wau. He went to Rang, which is the north part of up north, to share, to serve, and to love the family of Jesus Christ. Today we have our brother, Reverend Thomas, from Sudan Presbyterian Evangelical Church is here because he is a member of this family called the family of God. Christianity or Christians are everlasting family. In this world of chaos and confusion, let our brotherly and sisterly love continue, no matter what. 
let it remain. Our world is bombarded and is flagged with wars, with disease, with famines, all kinds of disasters are around us. But today this day call us to humble ourselves enough to see all this problem and then we can share them together with our brothers and sisters, not only in this building, but outside our world. In the book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse 4 to 5, Paul wrote, so that we might receive adaptation of the sons. Son of what? Sons and daughters of the most high. Sons and daughters of God. Jesus had made us family and was come and is still here with us and telling us, come to me. First, humble yourself because I am meek and humble. In doing so, that's where we will share, we will love, and we will serve. This is an obligation of we, those who are called the family of God. Those Christians who are brotherly and sisterly, love continue, are those who are sure making it into the heavens and be together with our Lord Jesus Christ. God shoots you. And God chose me. God chose us through Jesus to be the family. Family of love, family of sharing, and family of serving. We are family. And we owe it to Jesus that love one another just as I love you. You also care to love one another. It is a obligation. And it is our task that Jesus gave us. Now the brother and sister in Christ, let's think deep on this obligation. Let's think deep how we can carry this task. Let's think deep. Who or whom do we want to serve? In this text, no colors, no identity of every level in human life that Jesus points. But the words all is very inclusive, including me, including you, and including us. To take this mission around the world, and share it together. Looking to Jesus will humble us to the point where we will continue to love, where we will continue to serve, and where we will continue to share with our brothers and sisters. Not only here, not only in Lincoln, not only in Presbyterian level, but also around the world. We are family. Put it all together because we are family, because we are taught to love, and because we have been equipped to love. Let our brother love and sister love remain in Jesus Christ. No matter how hard it is in this messy world, we are in generation in which it's very difficult to welcome a stranger in your house. This person might cause problem in your world, but still, Jesus obligated us to do it so. Through the help of Jesus, 
when we humble ourselves according to what that we are called into by our Lord Jesus Christ, we must remain in love, we must remain in service, and we must remain in sharing. To remain in this spiritual race, let our love, brother love, and sister love continue. When we abide in Jesus and Jesus abides in us, do not forget to show hospitality to the strangers. Here my brother Sebit Deng and sister Nyaboy Shol, they are working with Catholic Serbs and their job is to receive refugees to Lincoln. We have heard that we have, there are about 6,000 refugees from Afghanistan, and now I think it's going to be continued in Ukraine areas. But they are working there, receiving the people that they have never met, and saying that they will never meet them again. Because as humans, we are social people in nature. But when we come to family life under the name of Jesus Christ, we are brothers and sisters, not just a social community. Let we continue to do it according to what we are called into. We are called into love. We are called into serve. In Ephraim 13, verse 2, we were told, do not neglect the hospitality to strangers, for this some have entertained angels without knowing it. Wow. Some of you, some of us, has entertained angels without knowing it. Our Bible proved that. Abraham welcomed three strangers in his home who turned to be the Lord and his two angels. His name for Lot welcomed those angels into his home and by doing it, his life was served. The love of God continued. And we were told to love one another. In month of February 1993, when I crossed the border between Ethiopia and Kenya, something was happening. I met the family of Anwak guy. Anwak is a one tribe of South Sudan. Anwak, they are the tribe of South Sudan. Some of them, they live in South Sudan. Some of them, they live in Ethiopia. About 60 of them, they are in Ethiopia land. In 1991, when we crossed the border, they killed a lot of my friends, Anwak tribe. Two of the guys, I'd never forget them until now. One guy by the name Santino near that. Hopefully, uh, Tom, Reverend Tom know that guy. He was killed when we were together. One of them is a good spiritual leader from uh, Seven Day Advantage by the name Gadwe. What? He was killed in front of us. And the brother of Reverend Deng in Homa, his brother called Shua, was killed while we were together in it and was hanged on the tree. And then the Anwak tribe came, they put the purse in his mouth on the tree. But when I crossed border, I met Anwak family. They ran out of anything in their hand. Two young kids and mom. They live on the hotel in Ethiopian border in Mayala. When we arrived there, we were seven. And then the eye of this young little kid caught my attention. What I did, I walked to them where they sit on the hotel, behind the hotel. And then one of my friends told me, Joe, what are you going to do? I say, wait a minute. 
I want to talk to this guy and his family. He said, what are you going to do with it? You forgot Santino then? I mean Santino Mia. You get our brother that way you walk. You forget also our brother. Show them that were killed recently by those people. I said that their, their, their father might be there when the killing took place, but this kid were not there. And then he told me, what are you going to do? When I talked to this guy, he said, brothers, we run out with anything. We don't have any money to take us to Nairobi, and we don't have money to take us back to Addis Ababa. I told him I will do this. I told him that what I'm not going to do, I will not be able to take you with me to Nairobi, but I will be able to send you back with your kid to Addis Ababa. And from there, you will meet a new community, and then they will take you wherever you want to go. I gave them, I gave them 800 beer, which means in that time, it came in to 150 US dollars. And then my friend become outraged with me, and then they told me, if we get lack of money, you will remain there, and we will go to Nairobi. I told them, okay, I have a big tape recorder. I knew that if I'm going to sell this one, it will give me enough money to take me to Nairobi. Then I gave this money to Anwaga. Why did I do it? Because of this name. I did not do it for, for tribal names. I did it because we are belong to Jesus. We are the family that were told, love your enemy. I transported that family back to Addis Ababa. Not only because of my love naturally, because what we receive here in this book obligates us to do it. Why? To serve others is to serve Jesus Christ indirectly. If you read Matthew 25, that was surprise. When did we see you like this and serve you? Jesus said, whatever you serve, whatever you did to this little person child because of me, you did it to me. When you serve others, you serve Jesus himself indirectly. When you treat others badly, you treat Jesus badly, indirectly. We heard it from the conversion of four on the way to Damascus. Jesus told him, I'm the Lord whom you mistreated. We are called to this. What will it look like when you and your family Put yourself to serve, to love, and to share. My wife, Lendor Bol, now she's in Nairobi, Kenya. Her and her three friends, including Nyaboy, they went all the way to Addis Ababa and then to Gambia. From there, they had conducted so many conferences. After they done these conferences, they went all the way to refugee camp with uh, Reverend Bapal Gagdang to distribute mosquito nets to the elderly people, to the pregnant women, to the newborn babies. They went there. They bought a lot of mosquito nets, and then they distributed it there, including my daughter, Ling Lang, whom you know here, 12 years old, who was born here in the uh, US. He went there to refugee camp and helped Bapal Gag to distribute mosquito uh, distribute mid-squeeze your net. After they done with that, 
they flew all the way to Cairo, Egypt. They were received by the pastor of Beatin Presbyterian Church in Cairo. They conduct two conferences there. After they done that, Nyaboy came back to the hospital, and then my wife and Nyawoga, they flew again all the way to Nairobi, and from Nairobi to Ladwa, and from Ladwa, they went to Kakuma refugee camp to visit people right there. They had one week there, praying, sharing, serving our brothers and sisters in refugee camp. Today, I talked to her, she's in Presbyterian Church in Nairobi, having conference with Presbyterian Church youth there in Nairobi. We are called. How do you look at it if God called you with your family and put yourself into it to love, to serve, and to share? Take my yoke. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. That's why the title of our sermon said, looking into Jesus, humble us to do whatever God put in our hand to do. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, Jesus said, for I am gentle and meek in heart. That's where we are called. We are called to gentleness, to meekness. If we will look Jesus, we will humble ourselves to see the thing that terrify our brother and sister in life. In this invitation of Jesus, our Lord proclaims himself to be everything to our soul. He said, if you do this, you will find rest not only in your physical, but in your soul. All we need to do is put our faith, hope, and trust in Jesus. To take his yoke is to commit to him and put ourselves in his service. That's take yoking mean. In this one, in this invitation, his purpose is seen in his yoke. He wants to share our burden. Take my yoke. Jesus wants to share our burden. And we, as his follower, want to share the burden with our brother and sister around the globe. In this invitation, his, his personality is also seen in his yoke. He wants to sympathize with our body. When we look at Jesus, the author, Paul wrote it, and the perfecter of faith, he will help us to humble ourselves. Through his humbleness, we will be able to love, to serve, and to share with our brothers and sisters in this messy world. Go, humble yourself, and look into Jesus. That's where we will see the world perfectly, and we will continue to do what we are being called to do. Thank God, in Jesus' name. We are called to make an impact in the world because of our faith. We use the phrase incarnational ministry. The way to impact a place is to be in that place. The church is not just being in the pews on Sunday. You could have this church without the building and still be a great community of faith. What happens here on Sundays to me is just kind of the icing on the cake. A lot of times we measure the significance of church by how many people happen to be in the seats on a Sunday morning. But I think it's a lot more significant to think in terms of the number of lives we have impacted beyond the walls of the church. That's where the God gospel really belongs. It's not in the building, it's out in the world. And 